I'm Johnny. And it's time for Constitutional Monarchy. April 17th of this year marks the 33rd birthday of the most important Canadian legal document ever. I'm of course referring to our Constitution, and in particular, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The Charter was in fact the first 35 laws of our Constitution, and it is, by definition, a document describing what makes us Canadian. Section 1. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees the rights and freedoms set out in it subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. Yeah, like it's kind of a mouthful, hey? Eh? Holy crap, you do not even know how many takes it took to even get through that. The charter itself is actually relatively small, and despite that first section, it's actually a fairly readable legal document. Section 2. Everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. And when it comes to the charter, it can be viewed as the operating system of our Canadian society. Subsection A. Freedom of conscience and religion. A lot of the freedoms that we take for granted now that are enshrined in our constitution were really just a bunch of parliamentary laws and precedent and even just implicit law. And they can be easily amended to by parliament. Subsection B, freedom of thought, belief, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. So the courts have embraced this purposeful interpretation of the charter, which means that its scope and what it covers changes as the times change. It's literally called the living tree doctrine. You can even see in how it's written, freedom of the press and other media. Subsection C, freedom of peaceful assembly. A general approach that the courts use to interpret the charter includes looking at international laws and the bills of rights of other nations and how they structure their own governments and their own free and democratic societies. It's like this cultural remix. We can stand on the shoulders of giants. But these other documents don't set precedent. They aren't set in stone. To quote the Supreme Court of Canada with regards to the U.S. Bill of Rights, these are separate documents born of different countries in different times. And subsection D, freedom of association. There's even this concept of a dialogue principle where judges can review legislation in tandem with the government, which is part of a dialogue between the government and the courts. Look, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms isn't perfect. <coughs> Notwithstanding clause. Sorry, I had a little cough there. But it's a really great piece of Canadian recent history. And it's something that really makes me proud to be Canadian. And if countries have constitutions, what exactly does it mean for a person to have their own personal constitution? What do you think of the charter? Let me know down in the comments below. And remember, kids, constitutional law is fun.